Hello, welcome to the NCOM wireless presentation on wireless terminology and concepts one. This presentation will cover the fundamental wireless terminology and concepts that are needed to understand wireless communications. The concepts and terminology are going to be grouped into two categories. One, it'll be the radio terminology, and two, we will be dealing with the wireless terminology in this presentation. Before you even begin to get into the ENCOM product lineup, you really must understand the fundamentals of the radio terminology here. There are going to be five fundamental radio terminology to understand. The master, remote, point-to-point, -point, point to multipoint, and repeaters with one and two radio cards. Understanding these fundamentals will greatly help as you proceed on in the additional presentations. The first fundamental concept is that of a master radio. A master radio is needed in order to communicate to one or more remotes in the system. For each wireless link, there will only be one master radio. The second fundamental concept is that of a remote radio. You can have one or more remote radios in a wireless link. Each of these remote radios will be communicating back to its one master that it is programmed to. For this picture here, a remote radio has been mounted to a readout construction sign. Now that we understand the fundamentals of a master radio and a remote radio, we can put those two together to form the most basic wireless radio link possible, a point-to-point -point link. The following example illustrates a point-to-point -point wireless link. At our main building, we have installed our master radio and it is communicating to our remote radio that is installed at the construction sign. The next important concept is that of a point-to-multipoint network. A point-to-multipoint network can be thought of as an extension to a point-to-point -point network. The only difference in a point-to-multipoint network is that instead of having only one remote, you could have multiple remotes that are wirelessly communicating to the one master radio in your system. The following il illustration shows a point-to-multipoint network. In this illustration, we have one master that is communicating to two remote locations out in the field. You can also have more complex point to multipoint networks, as well as different variations on a network design. All of these will be discussed in further instructional videos. For now, the concepts of point to point and point to multipoint are the key fundamentals to understand. Another important fundamental concept is that of a repeater radio. A repeater radio is going to be used when a remote cannot talk directly back to its master radio. The remote will instead talk to a repeater radio and the repeater radio will act as a master and as a repeater, communicating back to the original master. A repeater radio can have one or two antennas as well. The following illustration shows a repeater that has two radios in it. The remote in this particular illustration is going to be wirelessly communicating to one antenna that is at the repeater location. 
the information will be transmitted internally in the radio to the second antenna, which will then be communicating back to the master radio. The benefit of going with a two radio as a repeater setup is it allows for the bandwidth on the wireless links to be optimal. The next section we're going to discuss is the fundamental wireless terminology. The fundamental wireless terminology can be broken down into physical concepts that we will be discussed individually. These five concepts are line of sight, Fresnel zone, antenna types, frequency bands, and wireless interference. The physical concepts are quite easy to understand as it is something that you can actually take a look at when you're out doing an installation with NCOM broadband radios. We will go back to our picture of a point-to-point -point system. In this illustration, you can see that there are no buildings, trees, or any sort of obstruction in the way between the master and remote radio. When we have no obstructions in the way, we call this a clear line of sight. It is always very important to have a clear line of sight for each wireless link in your system. The next important physical concept that we're going to discuss is that of a Fresnel zone. The Fresnel zone is a very important concept which at times does get overlooked during a wireless installation. The Fresnel zone is very important based upon the height and also the distance between each of these radios in the system. We will proceed on with an example to tell you how a Fresnel zone is affected by distance and height. In order to understand what the Fresnel zone is, you first have to understand how a wireless signal is being transmitted. In a point-to-point -point illustration shown here, the wireless signal is going to propagate through the air in a vertical fashion. Knowing that it travels through of the air in a vertical fashion is very important in how the Fresnel zone operates. The following illustrates the effects of the distance on the Fresnel zone. We can see in D1 our distance is quite short and therefore our Fresnel zone is looking quite decent, meaning that the wireless signal from the master to the remote is able to be sent and received. Now if we actually increase our distance and take a look at the, the second picture there, we can see that the wireless signal has been sort of stretched out. And you could think of the Fresnel zone as a football as the distance increases, this particular football is going to be stretched out more and more. In D2, with our distance that has increased, we are still able to maintain communications from the master to the remote. However, it is a little bit intermittent because our distances are getting longer. Now if we take a look at D3, our distance is quite lengthy. We can see that our Fresnel zone, or our football, has stretched out considerably and it's almost like a thin line or a thin wave that's going to be traveling through the air. Having a Fresnel zone like this is not the best. We always would like to aim to have a Fresnel zone such that the distances are shown in D1. With NCOM broadband radios, there are four commonly used antennas. A panel, Yagi, Sector, 
and an Omni antenna. We will go into detail of each of these antennas. For NCOM broadband radios, the most commonly used antenna is going to be the panel antenna. Uh, the panel antenna is going to be a very, very highly directional antenna that is excellent for long distance shots. It has a very narrow beam width that is associated with it. It's going to be about 10 degrees on both the, the vertical and horizontal plane, which allows for those long distances to be covered. On the back of these panel antennas is an actual sticker that is labeled polarization, meaning that the antenna could either be polarized in a vertical fashion or in a horizontal fashion. The second antenna that can be used with NCOM broadband radios is going to be a Yagi antenna. Just like the panel antenna, the Yagi antenna is also a directional antenna, although it is not highly concentrated in terms of its beam width as opposed to the panel antenna. The beam width on a Yagi antenna is going to be about 45 and 50 degrees on the vertical and horizontal planes respectively. Uh, this makes the Yagi antenna very good for medium to medium long distances on there. If you're looking for longer distances, still the panel antenna is the choice to go with. The third antenna that can be used with NCOM broadband radios is going to be the sector antenna. Now the sector antenna is going to be very useful for medium or medium to short distances but covering a wider range. So for example, if you wanted to cover maybe two blocks or three blocks and have multiple radios shooting back to the one master, a sector antenna could be useful in that situation. A sector antenna can only be vertically polarized and as you can see the beam width is going to vary from anywhere from 45 to 120 degrees which allows you that wide distance but not a long distance in which it can work with. The fourth antenna that could be used with NCOM broadband radios is the Omni antenna. Now the Omni antenna is going to give you a 360 degree beam width, but the trade-off is it's only very good for short distances to work with. As well, the Omni antenna can be vertically polarized only. For example of uh, distances in which you could work with, you'd be looking at using this as a potential access point or just half a block or even less in length. The NCOM broadband radios have three frequencies in which they operate in, 2.4, 4.9 and 5.8 gigahertz. The following chart gives you an outline of the characteristics of each of the frequency bands that are available for NCOM broadband use. As you can see, the, the 4.9 frequency band is quite useful if you're looking for a licensed frequency that's going to be used for safety or agency public use on there. If you're looking for something that's going to be offering you a little bit more bandwidth to work with, you would be operating in the 5.8 unlicensed frequency band. In all of these frequency bands, it is going to have very low interference and noise. As you can see, with the 2.4 frequency band, it is not 
normally recommended to be used for high bandwidth applications but only to be used as a Wi-Fi or access spot as the 2.4 gigahertz frequency spectrum can be quite saturated with other equipment out in the area. The final concept that we'll be covering in this presentation is that of wireless interference. It is possible to have a clear Fresnel zone as well as excellent line of sight in your wireless link. However, in very rare instances, you could still have what is known as wireless interference on your NCOM broadband radio system. The following illustration is an example of wireless interference. From the illustration, we have our point-to-point -point link of NCOM broadband radios. And in the illustration, we can see that there is a another wireless system that's in the area that could interfere with the NCOM broadband network. There are ways to minimize this wireless interference if there is other networks that may be operating on the same frequency as the NCOM broadband equipment. For example, we could set the radios to have a fixed frequency such that it is not interfering with the other wireless network. For now, it is important to understand the concept of wireless interference and we will go into further details as to how to minimize this interference in additional videos. We recommend that you visit us at www.ncomwireless.com to learn more about our training videos and our product lineup. Thank you.